Death Valley in the United States. It's one of the hottest and most hostile places on Earth. Here, our team of five scientists will face their ultimate test, a series of challenges all about space exploration. Our five scientists are Kathy Sykes, an irrepressible physicist who thrives in the face of adversity. Ian Stewart's our first rough science geologist and an eternal optimist. Ellen McCauley is an intrepid botanist from Missouri with a never-say-die attitude. Mike Bullivant's our creative chemist who makes magic with everyday items. Jonathan Hare is a physicist, inventor, artist, a true Renaissance man. And then there's me, Kate Humble, here to lend a hand. Together, we are Rough Science. Mission Control is an abandoned silver mine on the edge of Death Valley. Here, the scientists have basic kit and simple tools. Ingenuity, they supply themselves. Now then, for the final programme. We're going to go out with a bang. <laughs> or hopefully, <laughs> in fact, three bangs. Because Kathy, Jonathan and Mike, I'd like you to come up with your own rockets. Wow. Oh, boy. <laughs> OK? Yeah, now, I'd like the three of you to each come up with your own design. You can do whatever you like. There's just one little twist, and that is that your rockets need to be powered by this. It's water. <laughs> oh. That's the only fuel you're going to get. And the other thing is that you're going to take a passenger up with you. The Russian sent dogs. You're going to send an egg. <laughs> Intelligent white <laughs> <like> dog. <them. laughs> so um, that is your passenger. <clears throat> that egg needs to come back to Earth intact. Oh, I knew it was going to be this. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Ellen. You know that when the little shuttles break away and then they're dropped down gently, gently, gently by a parachute? Yeah. <laughs> That's your job. Think of the parachute that can bring this non-hard-boiled, ah. very fresh, squelchy egg back down to Earth in one piece. You have three days. You have everything around the mine, everything in the workshop, and, of course, what is in the magic trunk. Oh, look, there's more eggs. <laughs> Water is not a conventional rocket fuel. Traditionally, rockets use something a little more flammable. So how do you turn boring old water into a high-powered rocket fuel? Any ideas yet? Well, in order to make something go that way, yeah. ideally you want to push something else that way. Right, so we to could, get propulsion. That's it. So we could force water out of here, maybe by, for instance, pumping this full of air under pressure. Right. Force the water out and it makes that move. Mm -hmm. And even better, rather than using air, if you use steam, you yeah. get incredible energy, so it might be too dangerous, I don't know. But I, I'd like to have a go. That yeah. could go really fast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I think I'm going to use a different uh, approach, and a chemistry approach, because there's lots of energy in that water, believe it or not, and oh. I'm going to try and tap that. OK. I'm going to yeah. try. <laughs> but rockets are just the first part of the challenge. It's going to be down to Ian and Ellen to provide a safe landing for our fragile payload. So what do you think about starting with just opening up a bin bag and making it as large as we can? So when you're thinking about building a parachute, what do you have to think about? What are the main concerns? Well, the big thing is the surface <coughs> area of the canopy determines how much drag there's going to be on the, the thing as it descends. Right. So you basically got the weight of the object, the egg, whatever, yeah. and the canopy pulling down. Yeah. And then acting against that is the drag of the air resistance keeping it up. Yeah. So that's an important balance. So, so you've got to get that balance absolutely right that it doesn't smack down on the ground. But equally is there the problem that it could just be hanging in mid-air and it never comes down. It could float off into space. Uh, that <laughs> I mean, we have gravity on Earth, so it'll yeah. definitely come down. Yeah. It just depends on how fast. Mm. Okay. And if it gets wind blown. Right. So if the parachute is too small, then we get scrambled egg. If it's too big, then we may never see it again. So just how is Mike going to use chemistry to turn everyday water into a supercharged rocket fuel? Water's H2O. Yeah. Which is each water molecule is one oxygen atom combined yeah. to two hydrogen atoms. Yeah. What I'm going to do is use electrical energy mm -hmm. to break those hydrogen oxygen bonds. OK, yeah. so you're going to split them off. Yeah. All right. In the process, I form hydrogen gas yeah. and oxygen gas. Right. Then what I do is combine the hydrogen oxygen gases that I formed mm. in, say, in a bottle like yeah. this. If I put a spark to them, then the oxygen and the hydrogen will react together to reform water. Yeah. And in doing so, will release energy. What, enough energy to propel a rocket? Enough for an explosion. Really? Yeah. 
It's the explosive force of this reaction that Mike is hoping to use to power his rocket. Jonathan is taking inspiration from the Victorian era for his rocket. Time to demonstrate the power of steam. So the water's being heated up. Yep. And is it a bit like one of those kettles with a whistle on it? Yeah, definitely. If you blocked it up instead of having the whistle, yeah. eventually you've got a little bomb there. <laughs> so that thing would just come shooting off because of the pressure of the steam not being allowed to escape. That's right, because it's expanding. OK. Whee! <laughs> I'll turn this off. Well, yeah, I can see the theory. But if it only goes two feet high, it's not going to be much of a rocket. Yeah, well, it doesn't take a lot for that little rubber bung to come off. What we're going to have is a much stronger thing made out of steel, and the pressure is going to be hundreds of times that. Kathy's leaving the flash stuff to the boys. Her rocket is a model of simplicity. Kate, this is my rocket. That is a plastic <laughs> bubble. <laughs> well, well, it is now going to be a rocket from now on, and these are the fins, and... There we have a rocket. And so what's going to go in here, then? Well, I'd put the water in here, mm. and then what I need to do is get a load of air at high pressure inside here. Yeah. So if you just hold that, yeah. here's my gubbins to do all that business. I just stick that on there and get the bung inside the bottle. OK. Keep it nice and tightly pressed. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to use this foot pump here and attach that to the end there. Yeah. And I will then start to pressurise. Right, and, and all does all the water spurt out and everything and... It, exactly, the water comes spurting out and that pushes it higher and faster and there we have the rocket. Mike's plan is altogether more ambitious. He's going to split water into oxygen and hydrogen, armed only with a bunch of pencils and a piece of copper plate. What I'm going to do is use electrical energy to break the oxygen-hydrogen bonds. Yeah. Well, this is electrolysis, this process. OK. Mm -hmm. Mike's connected two wires to an electrical power supply. He's going to use the graphite from the pencils and a piece of copper to pass an electric current through the water. Let's put the magic ingredient in first. A little bit of table salt, because the conductivity of water is very low. It won't conduct electricity. So I'm completing the circuit. Well, by putting salt in, that by will make the water more that. conductive? Yes. Oh, OK. So what am I going to be looking for here? You're looking for bubbles. Oh, bags. there are bubbles on the, um, on the copper, I can see. Yeah, these are two different electrodes. So hydrogen will be generated at one electrode and yeah. oxygen at the other. Mike's chemical wizardry should turn water into something very different. Two gases, which when they're combined, are highly flammable. Presumably you're going to have to collect an awful lot because... <laughs> though this is. It's not wildly impressive yet. No, I've only got three days, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Jonathan's been rummaging around the workshop looking for pieces to make a steam-powered rocket. So how's it coming along? This is it. This is the rocket? Yep. So we've got a hefty steel tube here. Yeah. This is going to be filled partly with water. Yeah. And we heat the whole thing yeah. way above 100 degrees. So the water wants to vaporise. Yeah to form steam. Yeah, so it's just going to become really under pressure. And then we're going to have a very small hole here, which we're going to be able to open at the crucial time. Yeah. And then all that energy all that you've been storing up by heating it is going to be released through that small hole. Yeah. Produce tons of steam shooting out that direction. That's going to push this thing out in that direction. So hang on a second, you've got this hefty great rod. It's got to be because the pressure is incredibly high. It's 300 degrees yep. and it's going to be flying through the air. Yep. You've just created a surface to air <laughs> missile, Jonathan. It's lethal, this thing. Yeah, I think it might be. <laughs> if it works, this will be the most powerful rocket of the lot. Outside, the parachute team have finished their first design. Now they need to check if the canopy will open. Oh. 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 That was a bit lousy. That wasn't very good. They'll have to do a bit better than that to bring the egg safely back to Earth. The trouble is, it's just not inflating quick enough. I don't, I don't know if it's not inflating quick enough or if we're just not up high enough. Yeah, right. you have a lot higher drop, it's got more of a chance to get fully inflated before it hits the ground. Right. If they're going to have any chance of success, the parachute team need to find a bigger drop than the mine can provide. It 
It's nearly the end of the day, and Mike's scaled-up electrolysis should have been filling his bottles with hydrogen and oxygen. Time for a test. <laughs> you spent all day collecting me an empty bottle. Yep. <laughs> so it's full of oxygen. Is it? Yeah, well, there's oxygen in there. Right. Yeah. So we'll test for that. Yeah. So if you light that splint... OK. If blow this is oxygen... Blow it out and then just put the splint in there and see if it relights. It's... Not much oxygen then. Let's see if we've got hydrogen, shall we? Yes, let's see if that works. <laughs> okay, what do we have to do with that? Well, this one's a little more dangerous, but I'm going to put ear defenders on. Okay, I've goggles got... on, gloves on. on. I might stand back if you don't mind. So, do you no, want me to I un stand back. undo this now? Yep. Okay. Yeah, the hydrogen's lighter than air, so it won't. Uh... Okay, I'm standing back. Gone, <laughs> Day two, Ian and Ellen are heading for the hills. Wow, look at that. That's what we want. They need the height to simulate the kind of distance their parachute might have to fall when it comes out of a rocket. Oh, that's great. You go up? Yep, yep. In case of disaster, they start off using a stone in place of the egg. Woo! This is great! All right, here we go then. Well, but that looks pretty good. Time to get an egg out. So is the parachute good enough to give it a soft landing? Beautiful. Oh, it's not even rocking as much. Oh, it's going to hit oh, the granite oh, oh, Aye, and fall all the way down. Oh, the poor egg. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on, I'm coming down. Oh, that's awful. Oh, I can, I can see it already. <laughs> poor egg. Yesterday, Mike's electrolysis failed to produce any oxygen or hydrogen. Unless he can find out what went wrong, his rocket will fail completely. How did you sleep last night, Mikey B? Not very well. <laughs> but it did give me an opportunity to think about what went wrong with the hydrogen and oxygen test that we yes. did last night. And what I think is happening is, you know, we use table salt, sodium chloride, mm. to and improve the conductivity of the water. Yeah. Well, by introducing sodium chloride, we produce chlorine together with oxygen at that one electrode. Oh. So the oxygen we were using yeah. was contaminated with chlorine, and that will prevent it lighting a glowing splint. So it's basically not pure enough it's for your needs. Enough. No. Fortunately, there's a simple solution. Instead of using salt to improve the water's conductivity, Mike switches to baking soda instead. It does exactly the same job, but without contaminating the oxygen with chlorine. The key to Jonathan's rocket is to release the steam when the pressure has built to a maximum. So he's going to use glue to plug the rocket's nozzle. The idea is that when the water inside the rocket reaches 200 degrees, the glue melts. High-pressure steam bursts out and the rocket shoots skywards. With Jonathan and Mike still in the workshop, it's Kathy who has won the race to the launch pad with her pressurised water rocket. Here is my launch system, this spanner, <laughs> and it just fits perfectly there and it's going to wedge the bottle in place. So we're going to pump like crazy with from the, a long distance okay. and then we'll just pull the string back yeah. and it will release the rocket. <laughs> So it's the boys' turn now, and Mike's ready to test whether his new improved electrolysis has produced oxygen and hydrogen. <gasps> there we go, oxygen. Fantastic. That's Fantastic. a relief. <laughs> no contamination with chlorine, so it's brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay. But what about the hydrogen? Now, what about the hydrogen? Because, you know, we were all prepared for a big bang yesterday, Mike. Yeah, there's the hydrogen. Right. Ready? Mike's electrolysis is at last producing oxygen and hydrogen. Now he has to collect enough to mix together for his rocket fuel. 
But so far, only Kathy's rocket has achieved liftoff. So Ellen has joined her to design the nose cone, the all-important re-entry module that will carry the parachute and the egg. Are you butchering rockets over here? <laughs> <laughs> We're adding the two different parts together. So basically, we'll put the egg in this section, the nose cone. OK. And how is that going to be released? Because surely, if it is shooting straight up in the air, the air pressure is going to be pushing down on that and not let it come off. Well, that's it. It stays on while it's going up. Yeah. And then when it heads down... Yeah. ..pulls off easily. <laughs> <laughs> the parachute will open. OK. And it will sink beautifully to the ground. OK. Outside the mine, Jonathan's steam rocket is the second one to make it to the launch pad. Let's go! All we have to do is wait for the water to reach 200 degrees and the glue plug should melt, sending the rocket soaring skyward. At least, that's the theory. Come on, old thunder. Do your stuff. But 20 minutes later, there's no sign of action. Jonathan abandons the launch. Has it moved on? I think so. What do you think's gone wrong? I think it's reached the temperature. Because, yeah. I mean, it's been burning, heating that thing up for 20 minutes now. So I think probably what's happened is that the seals have failed. So it's never built up any pressure. Right. Because it's just leaked out yeah. since it started yeah. boiling. So there was nothing to push out that glue bung no. to give it the lift. Yeah. At the moment, it's no contest. Kathy is still the only rough scientist with a working rocket. So it's time to test the nose cone. Will it separate from the rocket as planned? OK. OK. All of a sudden, I'm feeling pressure. <laughs> Good to go that way. Whoa! Come off, come off, come off! <laughs> Whoa! Come on, come on! <laughs> But at the end of day two, at least Kathy has a rocket in the air. Jonathan's steam rocket needs some urgent repair work before it's ready for a second attempt. Whilst Mike hasn't made it to the launch pad at all, he's still collecting rocket fuel. Day three and Mike's finally collected enough hydrogen and oxygen. He's combined them, but will the mixture provide enough thrust to launch his rocket? First test. Yes. <laughs> I'm so anxious, you wouldn't believe. Can you just block the nozzle up if I put it through there? Got it. All right. OK. So this is the hydrogen-oxygen rocket fuel. OK. Give me the ignition First device. Ignition. You've got fingers in your ears, because it's going to make quite a bang, I hope. Will it? Yeah. OK. Right, tell me when I can release this finger. And I'd stand back a bit, please. All right. OK, you can release Ready? it. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Let's that retrieve it. That was amazingly high. That leaves just Jonathan still to get off the ground. He's welded every joint on his leaky rocket, trying desperately to stop steam escaping. Stand back. Right. The leaks have been plugged, the glue is in place, and the pressure is beginning to build. And then... Oh, it's steam coming out. Oh, my God, it's changing. It's, all the noises are changing. <laughs> so come that on. glue's come out, I think. Come on. I think that's it. No, it can't be. Maybe the glue went a little bit, yeah. relieved the pressure. It saw a little bit of steam, yeah. and that was it. It looks like the glue plug has melted too early before the pressure has had a chance to build up and there just isn't time to try and come up with an alternative plan. So now there are just two rockets left in the rough science space race. Mike is busy fueling his full-size hydrogen-oxygen rocket. The rest of the team are working on parachute deployment. Last night, they couldn't even get the nose cone to come off. The problem seems to be that as the rocket flies through the air, the nose cone is pressed down, trapping it in place. Jonathan is keen to put his failure behind him. Well, I think what you need is it's like a sort of collar that goes around it, and this just sits in it. So it just then, holds everything in place? Because it can't move then. 
Okay. But when it, when it, as soon as it's not vertical, when it's high up, it'll just fall out. I think that will work. The collar should support the nose cone and prevent it being rammed down onto the rocket. Yeah, it's got to stick up. We have separation. Now we need the parachute to slow the nose cone on its descent. If this works, we'll be ready for the egg. So can we okay? Well, let's see. <laughs> and it's out. Oh, oh, no. No. Almost. That looked like just bad luck. One more go and they should get a successful deployment. But time is running out, and since Mike is finally ready to launch his scaled-up hydrogen-oxygen rocket, the team decide to combine the next parachute test with his launch. But they're still not risking an egg. Now, this could be a big, big bang. Or it could be a damp squib. All right. <laughs> I might, if you don't mind, stand over there. <laughs> Good luck, Mikey B. Oh! oh. <laughs> We've had meltdown! It's oh. blown a hole in the... Oh, dear. Lots of hot air, but no lift-off. The scaled-up rocket got so hot, it just melted. It seems we're in a bit of a pickle. Well, I don't think we can go with this. We've got to go with Cathy's. Do you think? Yeah, but if we use a rocket this size, which this has been designed for, it's going to happen again like and that. And yeah. we need a rocket about this size to be able to, to, be able to yeah. lift that payload. Yeah. So we've no choice. OK, Cathy? Yep. Let's do it. The final bit of the Rough Science space mission. Time for the precious payload and an appropriate way to cushion the egg on touchdown. Yes. We're going to load it with some nesting material. Oh, you're going to give the egg a nest. Yeah. Brilliant idea. All right, I have the egg. OK. In it goes. Are we ready for blast off? Yes. Should we all stand back? Beautiful. Over there. Go. Over there. Okay. Um, big moment. Will the parachute deploy? Will the egg survive touchdown? It's quivering in anticipation. Quick, quick, quick! Do we? Do we? Do we? Yes! I think we do have a happy egg. Yes! <laughs> hang on, hang on. Just, we have to do the final egg test. Are we ready? Sorry, old friend. Yes! <laughs> well, that is it. Rockstar's space mission is complete. Over and out. <laughs>